In this video, I'm going to discuss marketability ratios, also known as valuation ratios. Now, every time we use the term valuation ratio, okay, we normally refer to ratios that analyze the value of the firm or ratios okay, that are used to evaluate the value of a firm. When we say value of the firm, most of the time we are referring to the value of its common stocks. Okay. Now, before we go to the ratios, let's talk about the common elements okay, found in valuation ratios. Normally, you will see dividends per share, the earnings per share, and the market value per share. Now, what is your dividends per share? This is actually how much you are receiving per share. Okay, now, when we say how much you are actually receiving per share, this is in the form of cash. Okay, so let's say a dividend per share of 10 will mean 10 pesos per share. So if you are a holder of, let's say, 1,000 shares, you will be receiving 10,000 pesos. Okay, now, earnings per share, per share will refer to your share okay, in the total net income the total net income of a company okay and that is stated on a per share basis so again if your earnings per share let's say is um, five pesos and you are a holder of let's say one thousand share okay five times one thousand okay that will be five thousand this means that your share in the overall profits of the company is five thousand pesos now take note no, that the dividends per share is different from your earnings per share. Normally, your dividends per share will be lower than your earnings per share because this is how much you are earning and not all of the earnings are distributed to the owners. Only a part is being distributed. And what is being distributed? Those are now your dividends. Okay, now what is your market value per share? The market value per share okay, will pertain to how much the stock is being traded in the market. So, this could mean that if you're going to buy your stocks or these stocks, okay, this will be the amount of money that you're going to actually pay. Now, if you are a, holding, a holder of this stock and you intend to sell this, this is the amount of money you will actually receive okay, if you sell that in the market so those are the three basic elements of common valuation ratios you have the dividends per share earnings per share and you have the mar market value per share okay now these are just the elements these are not yet your ratios now to compute for your ratios okay let's try to use a different color and to compute for your ratios, we just have to put this together. Okay, let's start with the uh, easiest, okay, these two. Take note, when we say ratios, we are actually looking at the relationship of these different accounts. Okay, and if you try to analyze the value of your earnings per share with that of the market value per share, okay, uh, take note that your earnings if used as a valuation element okay that means that when we say valuation element we dip, we use the earnings okay to value the to value the stocks okay so normally the higher the earnings of a company if we go back to economics no okay this is the uh, demand curve and the supply curve again the higher the earnings of a company you will expect higher demand okay so there will be a shift in our demand curve and that will mean from your equilibrium price or fair market value you know, to this one to your new price okay because of the increase in the demand therefore we expect that the higher the earnings per share the higher will be the market value Per share and with that we have a ratio now it's called the price earnings ratio let me draw that one for you 
Okay, your price earnings ratio. The formula for your price earnings ratio is actually your market value per share. Let me write that. Okay. Need a magsulat sa mouse. You have the market value per share divided by earnings. Your earnings per share. Ayun. Okay. Now, what about these two? Okay. If you try to compare the, uh, or if you try to use the dividends, okay, as a basis for the uh, value of a stock, again, it has the same effect with your earnings per share. The higher the dividends per share, okay, higher demand for the stock, and that will result to higher price, okay. And the formula for this one, okay, if you try to put that together, you will get the dividend yield. Okay, the formula, okay, the formula for your dividend yield, okay, it's dy, dividend yield is equal to dividends per share divided by the market value of the stock or the market value per share. Okay, let's try to compare the two ratios. Okay, this one will tell us how much the market is willing to pay so the price how much the market is willing to pay for every one peso of our earnings and for the company the higher the better this means that there are a lot of investors who's willing to pay okay now for an existing investor that will be favorable if it's higher but for a potential investor Okay, this could be a relative or a measure of the relative expensiveness. Tama ba yun? The expensiveness of a stock. So you don't want this to be high if you are a potential investor. But if you are an existing investor, you want this to be higher. Okay? Now for your dividend yield, this is how much okay, you are actually receiving for every one peso. Of your investment Tara. for every one peso of your investment okay. so do you want this ratio to be higher or lower as an existing investor you want this to be higher you want to receive more okay based on what you have invested and in finance okay this is in terms of money this one is also in terms of money based on action number three cash not profits scheme that's why between the two most of the time we use this ratio to value the company okay why because it's based on actual cash received not just on the profits itself okay now there's also a relationship between these two if you try to put that together you will now get the dividend payout the dividend payout or simply your payout ratio will measure how much you are receiving for every one peso of your earnings okay and the formula for that will be dividends per share okay dividends per share divided by your earnings per share there you go uh, okay do you want this ratio to be higher or lower? Well, this one, it really depends. No, If you are an investor and you are just, let's say, concerned about your earnings from the profits, okay, or how much you're going to receive from the profits, you actually want this to be higher. But only up to a point. no? Because at some point, if this is too high, it means that all the earnings are already all the earnings are already being distributed and that is not favorable why because it's already considered as a red flag okay red flag for what that there might be no future ventures for the company no future expansions or maybe they are just paying high dividends so that they will be able to meet the price no of the stock Take note, no, the value of a stock is very important. Okay, why? Because this is an indicator of the shareholders' wealth. 
And that's the primary objective for financial management, no? to maximize the shareholders' wealth. Okay, So sometimes you see companies that are already at the brink of um, bankruptcy, they are, they are about to close, but because they don't want the market values to fall, they issue a high dividend payout or they declare an abnormally high dividends. No? Okay. Because, going back to this basic, basic concept, the higher the dividends, higher demand for the stock, higher demand for the stock, we mean higher price for the company. Okay, so what are the common valuation ratios? You have the dividend yield. Okay, what's the dividend yield? This is your dividends per share divided by the market value per share. Okay, let me write that again. Dividends per share divided by the market value per share. This one, okay, this one is your price earnings. It's actually computed by dividing the market value with the earnings per share. And that's your dividend payout. Okay, that's your dividends per share divided by your earnings per share. Okay, so if you're going to uh, define these ratios, you can actually define them based on their formula. The price earnings is how much you are going to pay or the market is willing to pay for every one peso of their potential practice or existing practice. This one is how much you are receiving for every one peso of your earnings. While this one, this is how much you are receiving okay, for every one peso of what you actually paid or what you are going to pay if you are a potential investor. Okay, so those are now your common valuation ratios. Now for your dividend payout, there's actually another ratio okay, related to your dividend payout. It's called the retention rate, also known as your plowback your plowback ratio. The retention rate is actually 1 minus your dividend payout. Okay, so if your dividend payout is 60%, then your retention rate will be 40%. Okay, your retention rate is how much is being left to the company after all the dividends was paid. Okay, so those are your common valuation ratios. Let's have a quick example. Let's assume the following values. Let's say, um, ano kaya? Let's say that the market value of your stock is, I did not prepare for this and I don't want to have another take. So okay, let's just pretend 20 pesos for the market value. And then the company was able to earn, let's say, um, 12 pesos okay, per share. So that's the earnings per share and the dividends per share is only 4 pesos. There you go. Applying the formula, let's try to compute for these ratios. Your price earnings is market value and market value or market value per share divided by earnings per share. Okay, so what's the market value? 20 divided by 12. Let me just get my calculator. Okay, um, how do you turn this on? 20 divided by 12. If you have your calculators with you, can you compute it with me? Uh, just to check if my computation is correct. I think it's 1.66. Okay. So let's try to put that here. 1.666666 or 1.67. Okay, well, what does this mean? This means that for every 1 peso of your earnings, the market is willing to pay 20 pesos. Okay? No. I'm sorry. For every 1 peso of your earnings per share, the market is willing to pay 1 peso and 67 centavos. Hmm. So if you are an existing investor, investor, do you want this to be higher? Of course, the higher the better. But for a potential investor, you want this to be lower because, well, this could be very expensive on your part. 
But actually, this is already cheap for a performing company. Assuming this is a performing company, because there are other companies whose price earnings ratio is more than 10 or more than 50. Some would go as high as 100. Okay, so that's for your price earnings. Now, let's see. Um, let's compute for your dividend yield. The formula for your dividend yield is how much you are actually receiving, that's DPS, for every one test of how much you have paid or you will be paying. So, divided by your market value. And now, I'm doing this slowly because I'm using the mouse. So, the dividends per share is for try to put that right there and the market value is 20 so 4 divided by 20 is it 25 percent or just 20 let me compute 4 divided that by 20 I think it's 20 yes it's 20 percent or 0.2 let's equal to 0.2 or 20 percent this means that for every one peso of what you are about to pay if you're going to invest or what you have paid okay or for every one peso of your investment the value of your investment okay, you are receiving 20 centavos let's review this one is how much the market is willing to pay for every one peso of earnings this one is how much the investor is actually receiving for every one peso of the investment or how much inflow for every outflow. Hmm. Now let's talk about your dividend payout. The dividend payout is computed by dividing dividends per share. This is actually how much you are receiving for every one peso of your earnings out of your total share in the profits of the company so that's your earnings per share okay so your earnings per share is four and your no your dividends per share is four and your earnings per share is 12. there you go four divided by 12 four eight twelve one third so that will be 0.33 or 33.33 percent this means that for every one peso of your earnings you are just receiving 33 centavos okay do you want this to be higher of course yes okay uh, but not to the point that nothing will be left to the company so if you are asked no, uh, how much will be the retention rate or the plowback ratio the uh, easiest formula will be one minus your dividend payout okay so let me write that down retention rate uh, mouse issues okay so retention rate is equal to one minus your dividend payout and in that case this one is 0.33 therefore your dividend payout will be equal to 0.67 oh Okay, and one third for the investor, two thirds will be left to the company. Okay, so let's have another example. How do we use these ratios in, let's say, valuation? Okay, um, let's have the following scenario. Assuming, let's go back, I forgot the market value. Our market value is 20. So the actual market value is 20. Let me write that down. 20 and the actual earnings per share is 12 <coughs> excuse me so ayun you have 12 as your earnings per share now okay so let's just try to fill this up uh, your dividends per share is 4 okay so those are your actual figures let's change the color of the pen to make it more interesting i'm going to use red because it's my favorite okay so your price earnings let's assume that in the market so when we say a this is the uh figures you no know, for your asset 
is the actual yeah, for the asset and then although I don't want to use actual for a this could be x or y mm -hmm. because when we say actual you will be you will be confused later okay, when I use the intrinsic actual let's just say that this is company a and company a has the following earnings per share market value per share and dividends per share now moving on let's assume okay so m will stand for the market this is the standard okay let's assume the market okay, or the industry where the company belongs to has a standard price earnings ratio of uh, let's just say two two kaya and just to make things easy okay so what will be the intrinsic or should be or standard market value of asset a how are you going to answer this okay since the standard given to us is the price earnings let's use the ratio for your price earnings let me write that down how do we compute for your price earnings the price earnings is your market value per share i'm just gonna write market value because it's difficult to write using the mouse and market value divided by earnings per share okay it was stated that our earnings per share is 12 okay let's try to change the color that one is 12 that's already given and the price earnings is given at 2 there you go um, this one is equal to 2 Ayon. okay therefore what should be your market value if you want to have a price earnings of 2 wherein your earnings per share is 12 okay so can you try to compute for that okay block divided by 12 equals 2 the answer will be 24 haha so this is now the intrinsic value of the stock what does that mean given an earnings per share of 12 and a standard of 2 then your stock should be trading at 24 or this company stock should be trading at 24 but it's now actually being traded at 20 take note that this 20 let me change the color that 20 is dependent on the interrelationship of your demand and supply because of your demand and your supply this is now the market price okay, so this one is different well that's the market price but this one this is based on the price earnings you know? um, using the this is what you call your earnings valuation model okay so what now if you try to compare the two is actually being traded at 20 but the value should be 24 question are you going to buy more of this stock or are you going to sell the stocks if you already own them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes uh -huh. okay <laughs> uh -huh. okay let's continue actual value intrinsic value your value is understated this should be the value but it's being traded at 20 in short it's on sale kuma parang nakawagwag na yan dapat 24 but it's selling at 20 it's a good time for you to buy because it's cheap okay so that's how you use these ratios no in in analyzing the value of the stock let's have another example let's assume let's assume that the markets let's say dividend yield the market's dividend yield is um, 0.25 na lang yan i'm just ano i'm just thinking figures at random kunyari 0.25 
because earlier our dividend yield was where's our dividend yield our dividend yield is 0.2 okay now let's say that the market has a standard of 0.25 yeah so if your dividends per share is 4 and the market's standard is 0.25 how much should your stock be uh, traded your stock should be traded at its intrinsic value. So let's try to compute. What's the formula for your dividend yield? Your dividend yield is computed by dividing your dividends per share. I think it's dividends per share. Yes. How much you are actually receiving? Yes, it's dividends per share. For every one peso of your investment or market value. Okay, so in this case, and let's use the color green mm. in this case your dividends per share is already given to us at four okay at four and yeah. and your dividend yield is given at 0.25 how how will i write that down uh, let me just erase this Mm. Mm. and let me get the red one okay let's pretend i'm still enjoying this it's 0.25 okay there you go so what should be your market value okay let me just grab my calculator what will i divide to four so that i will get 0.25 um working back that will be 4 divided by 0 0.25 and i will get 16. okay can you please have a check okay 4 divided by divided by 16 is it 0.25 is it yes it's 0.25 there you go so this should be the value oh, no it's not 16 let me erase that that one should be the value of your stock at 16 using your dividends as the basis for valuation okay so this is what you call the an example no? an example of the dividend valuation model hmm. let's try to put things together so if this one is 16 and it's actually being traded at 20 are you going to buy or are you going to sell mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> earlier when the intrinsic value is 24 and the actual value is 20 this is a good time for us to buy because it's understated what about the 16 versus 20 the value of your, of your stock should be 16 but it's actually being traded at 20 this means it's overvalued it's overpriced therefore it's a good time for you to sell if you have this stock imagine you're selling a stock whose value is supposed to be 16 and you're selling that for 20 now the common question will be sir what are we going to use we're talking about the same stock but using different models okay gives us different decisions now it's really up to you you know you have to investigate further okay? normally we use the dividend valuation model your dividends per share why because this is already the actual amount of money that you are going to receive or that you will be receiving but these earnings per share well can be manipulated Ayan. Okay. there are possibilities that the revenues could be overstated or expenses could be understated so which is more reliable the dividends per share now what about companies no companies who are not yet uh, distributing dividends because these are small companies and they just started no, in their operations there's not enough cash for distribution as dividends okay so how do you value them you value them using the earnings per share
Okay po. And there you go. Am I saying that this one is better than this one? It really depends. Again, okay. Uh, it really, de really depends on the quality of information available. Okay. So, I guess that's it. Um, yes. That's it. And thank you.